Undoubtedly, unemployment is one of the greatest social and economic problems facing the world today. It is even more of a concern among many of the younger population where the prospects of finding sustainable employment that enables a basic standard of independent living is becoming increasingly unobtainable. Well, why is this so? There are various reasons put forward to explain why people can't find work. They include the rise of automation, computers and advanced technology, the outsourcing of manufacturing jobs to other countries, inadequate training and education to equip workers in new employment sectors, the lack of demand brought on by government austerity which reduces available income to generate sales, production and employment, the paying down of very high levels of private debt which also takes spending money from the private economy, and the privatisation of public utilities which in the past were providers of apprenticeship training. The social consequences of unemployment include poverty, crime, social isolation, depression, despair, relationship and family breakdowns, and social and political instability. It's also been shown that the longer a person remains unemployed, the higher the chances they'll become unemployable. Sadly, the figures governments use to measure unemployment are nothing short of farcical. In Australia, for example, people are officially recognised as being employed if they work one hour a week. A more realistic measure of unemployment would be the number or percentage of people seeking full-time employment on at least the basic weekly wage, which in Australia in 2016 is $672.60 per week before tax. Anything less is either unemployment or underemployment. There will always be, of course, fractional unemployment, which exists in any economy due to people being in the process of moving from one job to another. The fact remains, though, that in most countries, including Australia, there are far fewer jobs available than there are people seeking work. And most work that does become available is of a part-time nature and does not provide enough working hours or income to adequately compensate the vast pool of job seekers. In the 2014 Australian Budget, Treasurer Joe Hocking and Prime Minister Tony Abbott tried to introduce a program where unemployed Newstart applicants under 30 could not qualify for unemployment payments for six months, after which time they'd be required to participate in the Work for the Doll scheme. If a person could still not find any employment after a further six months, they'd be taken off unemployment benefits and have to wait another six months before they could start again. Understandably, this draconian policy did not go down well with the Australian public, who saw it as grossly unfair and heartless in a time when there were far fewer jobs than people registered for unemployment benefits. Not long after, the ruling Liberal Party changed leadership from Prime Minister Tony Abbott to Malcolm Turnbull, when internal polling showed the government would be voted out of office in the upcoming federal election if Abbott continued leading the party. The question has to be asked though why Abbott and Hocking would put forward such a policy. Unfortunately, the unemployed are often portrayed as dole bludgers, freeloaders, lazy layabouts, or in Hocking's words, leaners as opposed to lifters. The general public might be excused for not understanding why the unemployed cannot get jobs, but there really is no excuse for politicians to paint the unemployed in such a negative light and impose such harsh penalties given that unemployment is a necessary part of the economic model the Government of Australia chooses to follow. Under this economic model, a pool of unemployed is considered necessary as a means of ensuring low inflation and price control. As such, the unemployment buffer is viewed as playing a role of an anchor, holding down rising prices and ensuring inflation remains at no more than 2 to 3%. So, in enabling the rest of society to enjoy the benefits of low inflation and price control, rather than being scorned and penalised, the unemployment should at the very least be thanked, lauded and compensated for a job well done. But why is unemployment considered necessary for low inflation and price stability? What is the basis of this belief? In 1958, a New Zealand economist, Bill Phillips, produced a statistical model known as the Phillips Curve that was adapted to show a relationship between the annual inflation rate based on the consumer price index and the unemployment rate. Using the information on the Phillips Curve, if you desired an inflation rate of close to 3%, you 
you would need to ensure the unemployment rate was no less than close to 4%. Any less would increase the inflation rate. If you wanted an inflation rate of 2%, the unemployment rate would be close to 4.7%. In the years that followed, however, from 1970 and beyond, the figures did not always fit the model. At times there was both increased unemployment accompanied by rising inflation and at other times low unemployment and low inflation. One of the major critics of the Phillips curve was the economist Milton Friedman who argued nevertheless that there was a natural rate of unemployment dependent upon the demand for labour and the growth in productivity. As a monetarist economist Friedman believed that if you increase the amount of money in an economy it loses its value and increases the likelihood of inflation. As well as a natural rate of unemployment to curb inflation, monetarists argue that wages must be low enough to ensure there is not too much money in circulation. This theory was the cornerstone of the economic policies of Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher in the UK and President Ronald Reagan in the US, a time of austerity and lagging wage growth. Mainstream economists now still for the most part accept that aggregate demand pressures will encourage rising inflation. The logic being that the more employed people there are, the greater demand for goods and services, which in turn leads to higher prices and inflation. So a natural rate of unemployment, also known as the non-accelerating inflation rate of employment, or Nauru, is adopted to curb inflation and maintain price control. There does not seem, however, any real way of estimating what the nail rule should be, so it has varied over time and is more like an intuitive estimate of what the level of unemployment should be. Note that under this economic model, unemployment is used to control inflation and not inflation used to control full employment. As such, low inflation is seen as a priority over low unemployment. The point does need to be stressed though. A level of unemployment is built into the economic model most governments choose to follow to ensure low inflation. The unemployed must to some extent be regarded as victims. Despite the commonly perceived notion of the unemployed as being lazy dull bludgers living off the income of hard-working taxpayers, most unemployed people desperately want work. When there are both less jobs than there are job seekers, and a government policy that requires a percentage of people remain unemployed, Surely the unemployed are more deserving of sympathy than uninformed condemnation. To victimise and deny the unemployed a subsistence income not only shows a lack of understanding of the economic model we operate under, but a heartlessness not deserving of any politician who claims to represent the interests of the population as a whole.